This is Pat Tice WA0TDA from the Courage Center Handyham system and Lyle K0LR and I have been working on a beta test of the new Handyham remote base equipment at W0ZSW. This is a screenshot of my computer here as we look at the W4MQ control software. Uh, this software is uh, indicating that our W Zero EQO remote base, which is already in operation, is in use. Um, I'm just going to show you what happens now when I go ahead and change to W0ZSW using the pull down menu. I see that uh, W0ZSW is available, and now let's just take a look at uh, what happens when we try to log in and there we go connecting and the frequency has changed to 3.925 megahertz and I'm going to uh, just use Skype here to make a call to the W0ZSW remote base and now I can hear some uh, signals on the band. I see the frequency has changed to 3926, so let's change that back to 3925. And now we're connected, and we can hear audio from the PICO net, which is in progress here in the upper Midwest at this time. It happens to be at about quarter after 10 in the morning and the net meets on 3.925 megahertz every day but Sunday in the mornings. So that uh, station is is talking there. Band conditions are really bad. There was a solar flare and uh, so conditions are pretty poor. Let's take a look now at what happened on the other end at the remote base station itself which is just set up around the corner uh, for this beta test in another room. Well, here we are at the remote base station, beta test uh, center. <laughs> Obviously not a laboratory uh, grade type of test setup and uh, kind of a rat's nest of wiring. Let's take a look at what's here and we're going to just start uh, in the back so you can see all the wiring involved here. Uh, we have the computer over on the far right and uh, the DB9 double female serial connector is connected uh, between the serial port of the computer uh, and following that around it goes into the uh, input DB9 uh, plug there on the Kenwood TS480HX. Uh, we also have, moving around to the front here, an LDG Auto Tuner. This is an AT200 Pro Tuner. And you can see the control head of the TS480HX. Now this is a 200 watt version of the TS480, so that's why we paired it up with the AT200 Pro from LDG. Uh, you can see that uh, we have a cable plugged into the uh, audio jack on the control head and that cable goes back around uh, to a sound card and let's show you where that is. Now you might think well I'm going to find that in the back of the computer but in this case we're using a Creative Labs external sound card. This is a USB sound card and we found that we needed to use this because uh, the sound was very thready coming through the um, W4MQ software interface uh, while the system was running Echolink. The system runs Echolink at the same time that it runs the W4MQ rig control software and uh, you can see the host software and that's what the screenshot looks like control op WA0TDA and uh, then we also have the Echolink screen here. Uh, the Echolink screen is there because the rig can be controlled on receive only through the text box. 
Uh, since this is a 200 watt rig, we do have dual power supplies and uh, those are operating right now as you can see and uh, then we have the standard uh, keyboard and mouse arrangement which uh, aren't usually used because the computer is controlled remotely uh, when we need to administrate it. This happens to be an SYX computer from Tiger Direct and the operating system is XP with a uh, I think there's a free upgrade to Windows 7 but uh, we stuck with XP for purposes of running this station uh, which seems to be perfectly adequate. Now uh, I can change the uh, frequency on the rig here by using the tuning knob or I can do anything I want right from the rig if I want to but most of the time this station will be sitting unattended and controlled by the control operator at a remote uh, location somewhere. So uh, the frequency will change when the W4MQ host software uh, is accessed and allows it to change. We are porting all of the audio through Skype and uh, Skype seems to work pretty well for us. We do have a few little issues with um, sometimes uh, we get uh, overflow errors when we're running the uh, W4MQ software and that's an issue that we're aware of and working on. The uh, rig can run up to 100 watts when controlled remotely uh, although it is capable of 200 watts and uh, that's another issue we think is in the software. So uh, we're working to get that corrected as well. So that's our remote base station beta setup. It'll soon be uh, at its final location where it will be uh, connected to a 300 foot dipole antenna that's fed with ladder line and a current ballon and it'll be able to operate 160 through 6 meters. The antenna is up about an average of 45 feet. So it's a pretty good 160 meter system and 75 meters for sure too. Uh, most of the wiring in the area is underground and so it's a pretty quiet location. Uh, this station is really good for handy ham members with disabilities who oftentimes have to live in assisted living type of situations and uh, they can't really put up an antenna so uh, this uh, this type of system can be a, a way to stay on the air. Uh, also when you're traveling uh, you can access a remote base system like this and you're running a real radio. Uh, this happens to be the rig interface and uh, I definitely wanted to mention that too. It's a rig blaster no mic. Very easy installation and uh, that provides our our interface. So we have our connection from the uh, mic out to the uh, radio right around here. As you can see the TS-480 is a two-piece radio. Uh, it uh, does not go together as a single-piece radio at all. Well, that's our little story for today. 73 from Pat WA0TDA. You can reach me at any time at my call sign WA0TDA Whiskey Alpha Zero Tango Delta Alpha at ARRL.net. And I hope to hear you on the air soon.